Hey guys, welcome back. This is Charlie again. So today I want to show you something special that I have devised using a couple of Tesla's patents. What I have here is an early preview of my plans to use a Tesla fountain as a steam condenser by using the fountain's water flow as a water to air heat exchanger to continuously expel the heat of condensation in the condensing section of the closed loop cryophorus system. If you're not familiar with the cryophorus system, check out the link in the description. So I'm going to start this video off with a quote from the fountain patent where Tesla is quoted as saying, Unlike the old devices in which only a very small volume of water is set in motion, such a waterfall is highly effective in cooling the surrounding atmosphere. To still improve this action, the free end 13 of the rotating shaft may be utilized to carry any kind of fan. The water may of course be artificially cooled. He explains how the fountain is excellent at cooling surrounding areas, so I realized that if the fountain was efficient at taking heat out of the air to cool surrounding areas, then it will also be effective at expelling heat to the air at the air-water interface. Tesla further explains that a fan can also be attached to the top of the rotating shaft, which thus aids in the airflow around the fountain. This is not shown in my design yet, but will be used in the final design. In the patent, it's also explained that this design of Tesla's is one of the most efficient ways of moving large volumes of water to a height to be splayed out into a shower of thin and large surface area, which is highly effective at exchanging heat with the surrounding area. The next quote from the patent that I would like to share is about the power requirements for operating the fountain itself. Tesla is quoted as saying, To convey an idea of the results obtainable with a small apparatus properly designed, it may be stated that by applying only 1 25th of a horsepower to the shaft and assuming a lift of 18 inches, more than 100 gallons per minute may be propelled. As the circulation is extremely rapid, the total quantity of liquid required is comparatively small. About one tenth of that delivered per minute will be generally sufficient. So it's proposed that it would only require a 25th horsepower electric motor to continually move over 100 gallons per minute around in the fountain, which is about 29 watts. I plan to use a small solar panel and battery pack to supply the minimally needed power for the propeller that circulates the water so that no energy is taken from the turbine to move the water in the fountain, which shouldn't be that big of a deal as 29 watts is not that large. With the curved basin, the falling water conserves some of its kinetic energy and momentum which increases the velocity of the water going into the propeller, which decreases the energy required to continuously raise the water up to a height. Tesla is quoted in the patent as saying, As the lift is inconsiderable, little power is needed to keep in motion a great volume of water, and the impression produced on the observer is very striking. With the view of still further economizing energy, the bottom of receptacle 1 may be shaped as indicated by the dotted lines 12 in figure 2 so as to increase the velocity at the intake of the propeller. I personally don't think it's a coincidence that the very next thing that Tesla patents after his turbine and pump is his fountain patent. The turbine was patented in the US in 1909 and his fountain patent was next in 1913. He was immersed in steam systems, boilers, and condensers from his formal training as a mechanical engineer, so I think he knew he needed a way to make the condensers more efficient, such that it required much less energy to move the necessary amount of water needed to continually make this cryophorous system work. If it requires too much energy to circulate the cooling medium, which cools the condensing section, the whole system is bunk, and he specifically talks about this in his article, Our Future Mode of Power, which a link to a copy of it can be found in the description. Tesla is quoted, Since the latent heat absorbed in evaporation and set free in condensation is very great, an immense quantity of water must be circulated through the vessels in order to prevent changes of temperature sufficient to seriously reduce the performance of the apparatus. Again, I don't think it's a coincidence that this fountain patent follows right after his turbine patents. It becomes quite clear that an efficient way of moving heat out of the condensing section is imperative to the operation of the cryophorous system, and Tesla's fountain does just that. It's extremely efficient in moving large volumes of water and exchanging heat with its surrounding medium, which I have shown Tesla explicitly explained when he wrote the patent. Therefore, I think it's extremely likely that Tesla designed this fountain with this exact purpose in mind, but was rather coy about giving up the more practicable use for this patent. I believe if these properties of the fountain were not a core purpose of it, he would not have stated it. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments section. If you haven't seen my Nikola Tesla fountain patent video, please go check it out on my channel, as well a link is provided in the description. Tesla goes into great lengths explaining the power generator systems he has devised in his article, Our Future Mode of Power. It's an excellent read, and I highly suggest reading it if you haven't yet. If you would like to help bring Nikola Tesla's turbine systems to the people of the world, go to my Patreon to aid the cause so we can make more physical prototypes and models. The link is at the bottom of this video's description. Thanks for listening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Charlie Solis. Have a great day.